Hey, attention everybody, welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. Who's ready to get started? Well, hi, I'm Tom with Hound Dog News, and we're about to start the Master the Camera class. And hope you guys all enjoy it. We'll uh, dig right into how we set the cameras for all this. I've gone ahead and added in uh, six cameras. And if you don't know how I did this, go ahead and go back to lesson 14. It's the lesson before this one. And you can see how we create a camera and manipulate it in the timeline. Uh, so to save time, I've got the six cameras set in here. I can click on any, any one of these now and uh, see that perspective. It's like a rough storyboard, if you will. Okay, and you'll notice that I've added numbers to these. So here uh, is hotkey number six. I just typed in six and I have a hotkey in. If I want to change to camera three, I can just hit the number three and I'm to that. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to start working at frame zero and I'm going to start uh, working with the camera. Okay, so here I'm just going to create a ton of cameras real quick. Again, if you don't know how to do this, make sure you watch the previous lesson, number 14. Okay, here we go. I've set this up with the different perspectives so that the camera editor will stay open. And now we're just going to focus down on camera 20. We've created a camera. We have a perspective, any perspective, and it doesn't really matter what kind of camera shot you have here but let's start with this yeah. and I'm going to take it to frame 150 and I'm going to roll my mouse and I'm going to adjust her and now I'm going to see the result it automatically created a key when I did that hey attention everybody welcome Right. Now, let's say you've created this camera and you've done that move, and somewhere down the line you realize that you needed it to look differently. All you have to do is get on this keyframe, and you can go ahead and adjust it how you wanted. Perhaps you wanted her to be focused up this way and more like that. No problem. Now, when you play your movie, Hey, attention, everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. She's Welcome not going to zoom out the same way. Hey, She's now going to zoom out this Hound way. Dog News show. Okay. So you have total control over a camera and also editing the camera down later so that if you need to move it over a smidge and you haven't ruined anything. And you can get it exactly where you want it. All right. Now, we're always focusing our attention on the transformations like zoom, zooming in, zooming out, panning left, panning right. Those are all transformation moves of the camera. But say that you were going to do perspective moves and just do a perspective move. You can slide the slider and get anything you want say oh that's an interesting shot or oh I'd like to come in and start zoomed in from the very beginning of the timeline and then at frame 150 I think I would like to uh, come in like that and just have a nice face shot okay so just without doing any big work or anything hey attention everybody welcome to the hound dog news talent we're show. doing a lens perspective news shot okay and you did all of that, and it's more focusing on the subject rather than the scene, okay? And so that's, I think, what the confusion is, is with lenses, you can really work with these perspectives and uh, get different types of views and that that you want, or you can combine them with zooms. Go on ahead to frame 150, and uh, rolled out. 
a now it would work in conjunction with that lens hey, that I already created. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead, line myself up on the keyframe and zoom in a little more so it's not such a uh, such a drastic zoom out. There we go. Okay, so this is how you can create that special effect they're talking about. Well, now you're using two different moves at the same hey, time. Attention, everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. And I think it's easier to see reversing this and showing you setting the lens perspective first of it going from large to small, being super zoomed in, and then going out, and then at the same time. Hey, attention, everybody. Welcome making the, the camera show. not go out anywhere near as much. And so it balances the two. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do to see this fully and how you can manipulate all of this with your with just a click. I can come in on this one and just delete it. And because I did that, hey, I can now you just see the lens the perspective. Or I can hit the undo key and put that back and just delete the lens for a minute. I'm going to hit it twice, but not double click it and delete it. And now I can see the difference. Hey, attention, everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. Okay, so that's just with a small zoom. And this is adding in the lens perspective. Now I'm going to hit the undo key so it'll bring that key back in. And then hopefully you can really see the Hey, attention everybody, welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. Who's Much more rich of a camera perspective. With those two things going on, it really is an advanced, more Hollywood-style move where you got uh, two, two things going on at the same time. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So you add stuff like that into your project, but... I think that the main point here, too, is that how flexible it is that now you've set this shot up, but you say, oh, man, I really wish my actor had come down just a little bit more. No problem. Move your actor down as long as you're on the right keyframe. You're not going to mess anything up. It's going to end up just a little bit further down. So it's real flexible. It's not something to fear. Uh, you can you can really play with this and get exactly what you want. And then we'll look at the overall view. And here we are. We just have these two moves in here so far on this one camera. Hey, attention, everybody! Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. Who's ready to get started? All right. Now say that that. I love this and I want to plug that in and that's going to be the first scene of my movie and even though I'd already created a camera on the first scene so now let's go into switcher you can see that I've created a movie with all my switches and I'll go back to the very first frame and the first frame is scene one okay and I decide that I don't want scene one in there anymore Let's see what it looks like with hey, scene one. Everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent Show. Okay, now see, I'm still looking at camera 20. Even though I moved this, turned the switcher on, it didn't make it be in switch mode. Put it to switch. We'll put it to the beginning. And now we're actually going to see scene one camera that I created. Hey, attention, everybody. Welcome. To the hound all right, it's real quick and fast and all of that. Say I want camera 20 in there now because I've created a new camera and I love it. 
you know, new perspective that I want to try. No problem. I can put scene one back just by right clicking and adding it in. But here we are. Now all of a sudden I've changed my movie. Hey, attention everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog News Talent It's show. not bad. I might even Who's keep ready it. To get start eh? Okay, that easy. That flexible. Here we go. Any cam anything I've already put in. I can go to that camera, I can switch it, edit it, move it around, change the lens, change, make everything perfect for just that moment of that camera. Um, easy smeezy. And then I can come in and I can pop it into the timeline. So all I have to do is create a new camera, uh, make it what I want it to be, and come in and replace it anywhere where I have a lame camera. Or I like the camera, I don't want to lose it, but I want to see something else. Okay, that's what makes Cartoon Animator just absolutely incredibly flexible. So watch, here we go. Hey, attention everybody. Welcome to the Hound Dog. There you go. And I could make 15 different versions of this and decide which one I like to put into my final edit. Okay, there you go. I think that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Now you're starting to master this camera. Okay, so this segment of mastering the camera we're going to go ahead and and have a short lesson on manipulating the cartoon animator 5 so that you can get around uh and work with it so i'm going to start you off by just coming up here and saying restore the default workspace okay and that's going to be your starting point for this lesson and then you're going to go up here and you're going to grab this controller here and you're going to line up between the link and the hide on high key right here okay so basically this arrow i'm going to line up with okay and then i'm going to come down here and i'm going to click on the show the timeline and so normally that would be locked down here, but I've already undocked it. If I double click on that timeline, it docks it down there where it would normally be under default. So I've already probably confused you, but I'm going to go ahead and now double click it. And I've set my timeline so that it's basically as narrow as it can be. And I'm lining it up right here under this search box. Okay, and I'm going to open the camera editor next, and I basically line it up to be above the timeline and below this bar right here. Okay, and then I'll go back and forth with sometimes so I can see all my cameras a lot quicker this way. All right, so there's that. Now, there's some things that you need to know. When you're working with everything, it can get really confusing, all of these boxes over the top of your screen and everything. But to save computer resources, the smaller your viewing screen is, the better and more true the previews will be and the accuracy of what you're seeing will be. If you've got a super rocket ship uh, computer, then you can play everything full screen. But most people don't have that. Um, so you're going to want to be able to toggle back and forth from this one to this one over and over. Okay, so normally when you're working with it, you'll have your editor down over here and your timeline here, and you can just toggle back and forth that way to use it. Okay, so what you got to know is anytime you close it, you're not ruining anything. All you have to do, every time you click it, it's going to go right back in where you left it. Okay, so that's a nice feature to know. Now, when I'm showing you something, I'm going to have to come over here like this so that every time I click the timeline, it doesn't close the camera editor. Otherwise, I like to keep it over on this side. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to tune in to part two where we'll keep working on this.